our last speaker uh, right now, Michael Taylor, so from the PNNL. Uh, Michael is currently a postdoctoral associate in uh, Christopher Underton Lab and is going to talk to us about uh, the use of uh, laser ablation electrospheric ionization mass spectrometry. Michael. Hi, yeah, it's really great to be able to present some of the work that I've been doing. So, um, so yeah, I'm a research associate at PNNL, uh, which is a national lab in the United States. And uh, my talk is gonna be focused on spatial metabolomics and the tool that we've been developing at the lab for single cell analysis and high spatial resolution imaging. So the, there's been plenty of really interesting transcriptomic talks so far, but I guess we're moving to the other end of the scale now, looking at metabolomics. So, um, so basically in metabolomics, we're looking at the products of cellular metabolism, and we're using these to really gain an insight into the function of cells based on metabolic content. So um, metabolomics offers a benefit over transcriptomics or proteomics. Uh, as my colleague Ben Mao this morning showed that protein levels do not always translate will correlate with transcript levels. Whereas in uh, metabolomics, we're basically looking at the end products of all of these combined processes for a complete functional readout of the cell. So um, in spatial metabolomics, basically what we do is we have a, um, a material containing a cell such as tissue, and then we, um, we raster across the sample surface with a probe, which can be a laser in this example. And we basically just collect spectra at every position, abundance versus mass of a charge. And then we assign chemical structures from metabolites to peaks in the spectra. And in this regard, it allows us to build up a 2D chemical picture of the tissue. And um, this kind of untargeted approach is really necessary for spatial metabolomics as there's very, very limited labels available for targeted mass spec. And um, obviously we know that metabolism is dynamic, um, meaning that we wanna we want to capture, you know, the range of chemical species that are pro uh, produced in metabolomics. So it really offers a benefit over bulk metabolomics because we're we're treating a tissue as though it has a set a collection of separate metabolic profiles rather than a single combined metabolic profile. So we're retaining the spatial information. So. Um, what I've been doing is I've been developing a, well, I mean, there's multiple sources available for spatial metabolomics, but the instrument I've been developing is a laser ablation electrophoric ionization mass spec imaging system. So basically the key thing here is we use a laser set to the OH absorption band of water, which is 2940 nanometers. And then we can use the native water within tissues to ablate molecules, you know, metabolites. And these molecules are ejected as neutrals and then they're ionized in the electric spray and then directed into the mass spec. So just to hammer this home, you know, we can look at tissues and cells in their native state require no artificial additives. So this makes, this makes Lacey a really powerful in situ ambient spatial metabolomics technique. So uh, this is schematic of the Lacey based molecular microscope we've been designing. But very simply, we have a sample stage where we place the cell containing samples with an LED which illuminates the sample surface. And then we can take an image using the camera at the top of the optical stack. We can identify where cells are and then fire the laser at each cell sequentially collecting spectra and therefore a metabolic profile. And that's the first mode. And then the second mode is we can perform dual microscopy and lacy imaging of the sample. So um, this is a picture of the actual source. Uh, you know, I've pointed out that we have two cameras, two light sources, bright field and fluorescence. We have it attached to a mass spec here, which is a high mass resolving orbi trap detector. And you can see the laser box. And if you look at the zoomed in picture, you can actually see the sample stage with intercepting ESI and the MS inlet. And we also have a dual reflective objective, which allows us to focus the laser and also focus the image. So um, this is just optical targeting of allium sepa epidermal cells. So just uh, onion cells. And um, on the top left-hand corner, you can see an image. Basically, this is our achievable spot size. which has to be smaller than the diameter of the cell. So this is basically just one laser shot. And then I have a series of bright field images here where we're showing targeting the individual cells in a tissue. So you can see um, the images on the, on the right. You can see, you know, I've pointed out a cell coordinate and then we've directed the laser to fire that specific cell. And in the bottom few images, we're actually looking at multiple cells that have been targeted, multiple cells being blated sequentially. So um, if we ablate cells sequentially individually, we're, we're gaining metabolic profile spectra from this individual cell. We can basically collect a series of metabolic profiles, and then we can assign structures to peach, which we're detecting, um, which correspond to metabolites. And then we can compare the variants of metabolites across 
this large cell set population. So this is the approach that I'm showing here in terms of like optically driven single cell analysis. So um, this is a paper which we published just this year, looking at a high throughput uh, analysis, single cell analysis of just allium sepa cells, so epidermal cells. And here we're looking at uh, two sugars over a 60 cell set. And um, these two sugars are monosaccharide and disaccharide, the, the potassiated version. And I'm showing spectra, i.e. the mass of the sugar and the variance across the cell population in the form of a histogram. And um, you can see from the histograms the differences in variance across the cell set. So, you know, the disaccharide, for example, is unimodal and it has a normal distribution, whereas the, the monosaccharide is bimodal and it has two different distributions, it has a normal and a gamma, meaning that basically there's two population of epidermal cells in the tissue that we can pick out based on saccharide, monosaccharide abundance. And the other thing that we can do with this approach is basically calculate the metabolic noise which what that allows us to do is determine how significant the results are, i.e. does the metabolic noise, the variance that we're measuring, is it greater than the technical noise of the detector, you know, the natural signal fluctuations. And we're actually able to distinguish that, you know, the variance that we're measuring is greater than the, the technical noise, which means that these results are significant or actually, you know, measuring these subpopulations. And um, this is data from a different study. Uh, we, were, we were just trying to uh, replicate this on just a, a sequence uh, screening more cells. So this is a 200 cell set where we um, screened all these, you know, sequentially automatically. And we're just looking, again, we're just looking at, uh, with two different polarities here in mass spec, we're looking at positive polarity species and negative polarity species, and just picked out two plotting the histograms. You can see, you know, the potassium trisaccharide has a gamma distribution Whereas the low molecular weight um, malic acid, organic acid, which is a good marker for, you know, it, it appears in a number of different um, phenotypes and cells, uh, it has a normal distribution. So um, again, you know, th there's really no limit to how many cells that we can screen in this approach. So, you know, if we have 100 cell coordinates, 100 cells, we can screen 100 cells automatically. It's really dependent upon the scan rate of the detector. However, um, you know, the problem with mass spec is usually, you know, we can look at isotope patterns, but we usually just look at, you know, is the mass of the species, how well does it correlate with a specific structure? But the problem with, you know, we have structural isomers, which is a problem. They all appear at the same sort of mass. So if, you, if we consider a potassiated sugar, so this trisaccharide here, it could be a whole array of different uh, trisaccharide species. So how do we know which one it is? So we need basically, we need an orthogonal measurement to try and validate what the specific species is, like this metabolite. So one thing that we, you know, our, our microscope is really adaptable between, the, between different detectors. That's part of the reason why I designed it like that. So um, basically we can pop it onto different detectors, different mass specs to gain different information. So in one of the papers that we published earlier this year, we use an eye mobility separation system. So basically what we can do is we can trap ions, you know, they're produced from the Lacey process, we can trap ions and then we can pulse them through a drift cell. What this allows us to do is basically separate ions according to their collision cross sections or that, you know, their size. So large ions have a higher attenuation coefficient, whereas smaller ions have a lower attenuation. And basically this gives us two data points to measure. It gives us mass along with size. And this is a figure from a paper just showing, um, you know, if anyone wants to check it out, it's great. This is all this is showing is just, you know, we've got spectrum mobility, we've got a mobilogram, we've got two different components. And basically what we can do is we can take this data and then go into a database where we can look at mobility values for these species and then compare and see if they match up. And basically using this approach, we are able to determine that the major trisaccharide present in a single onion cell was uh, cellotriose. So this is a really cool thing we are able to do. And um, the other thing that we can do with our system is uh, we can use fluorescence for targeted cell ablation. So here I'm showing images taken using the CCD and you know looking at bright field and fluorescence wide wide area imaging, and just a BFGFP overlay. And um, th th this this is a section of uh, soybean nodule, and we're looking at um, it's infected with GFP labeled rhizobia, so uh, japonicum. And basically, we can use this. We can see the infection zones, the actual lower left image and we actually, we can identify this and then target these cells and then ablate these cells and collect a metabolic profile, which is, you know, uh, fluorescently informed. So um, this is a really exciting development. We're, we're interested in further refining this system. So, so finally, just to conclude, uh, this is, you know, 
high resolution lacy imaging um, of just the leaf system. So what, what we did in this study was we, we took a, you know, went down to the garden center and took an ornamental leaf. And you can see the leaf here has areas of pigmentation, you know, the pink region and the, you know, the vein structure and also the green region of the chlorophyll containing uh, region. And then we take this leaf, we excise it, place it on a sample stage, perform lacy imaging. You can see the analysis region post, post lacy analysis. And then we upload the data to an online annotation platform, allows us to uh, you know, assign, assign structure based on the peaks that we see. And um, this is some of the imaging data that we can actually acquire using this process. So um, this is just two samples. We're showing 2D uh, like iron images just showing specific species that we're detecting. And for instance, you know, we're looking at secondary metabolites, this catechol and ferroic acid actually localized in the, the vein structure. So it might be some, they may be somehow involved in nutrient delivery, whereas we look at lysine, we can see it localizes in the chlorophyll containing regions. So it may be somehow involved in photosynthesis. Obviously, this is putative annotation, so we need you know, more validation. So um, I hope like, I've really given you a bit of an overview about the capabilities of our system. And um, you know, there's a few things I really want to hammer home with this. Is, you know, Lacey's a really powerful spatial MS tech technique for metabolomics you know native state analysis we can look at materials in their native state we can perform single cell analysis we can also perform high throughput you know we can perform multimodal imaging bright field fluorescence imaging and um right now what we're doing is we're expanding the optics we're improving the optics of our system to be able to be applicable to different cell types smaller diameters so um i always like to finish on this slide so uh, at EMSL, we have a really growing MSI team. So each, you know, we're all in, interested in investing, investigating the metabolome of the protein by a number of different methods spatially. So if anyone's really interested in, you know, learning what we're doing in our group or, you know, EMSL as a whole, please feel free to reach out because, you know, we, we love talking about the things that we're doing and, you know, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's very open, open arena. So, um, if anyone has any questions, you know, happy to answer. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, we have a, a first question from Elisa Lou, a very good technique. A quick question. What is the number of cell sample size required for lazy to obtain reliable data? I, I mean, probably closer to like a thousand, thousand cells usually. That's what we try and screen, screen yeah which we have the capability to do in our system, so. So, so somewhere related to this first question, I was wondering what is the sensitivity of this technology? How many metabolites can you detect in one single experiment? Well, we've actually measured the sensitivity of our system and we're down to about four uh, femtomole. So, which is, you know, it's really cool. But there's, there's, you know, we, we can improve the sensitivity further by a number of different methods. For example, we have, um, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, a quite a limited capture efficiency. So we're looking at methods to actually improve the amount of neutrals that are post-ionized and captured using this process. Yeah, so basically a couple of hundred metabolites at a time. Thank you. Another question from Peter Denolf. Um, has anybody tried this on leaves infected with pathogens, notably at infection sites? Um, I'm not entirely aware of that just yet, but um, I, I don't know, you know, maybe, I mean, it, it's quite a new technology, but uh, po possibly, I mean. Uh, one more question, and um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but is this technology limited to the analysis of epidermal cells, or can you also access deeper cells? So, yeah, I mean, we, we can, it's really dependent upon the optics. So it depends how, like how much you can resolve the spot size, like the, the, the beam to be able to sample an individual cell. So um, at the moment we're at a spot size of about, you know, approximately 35, 32, 35 microns, but there's a number of methods that we can do to actually improve the optics. So we can reach smaller cell populations, different cell types, which is, you know, that's something we're really interested in doing. And, you know, we're exploring that right now, so. Yeah, David, uh, I have a kind of similar question asking about uh, maybe focusing on two probes, which can help going deeper into the tissue. Mm -hmm. So thank you. 
Um, if you have any other question, please continue to use uh, the Axel event uh, to ask David. Um, I think otherwise, I think we're pretty good on time. So I would like to, to thank our speakers. That was outstanding. Oh, we have maybe one quick question since we have one more minute uh, from <laughs> Min Seo Kim, sorry. Uh, can you do single cell proteomics this way as well? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> there's been very limited papers. Uh, I think there's actually, there's only one proteomics paper where they're actually using Lacey, but I mean, it's about how, you know, you're getting them off the surface. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, these, you know, there's, there's sort of like, there's two big research groups working on this um, in terms of application, you know, Lacey analysis for understanding you know, plant systems, like mammalian systems. So this, this is something that we really want to do, but it, I mean, it's challenging, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all our speakers for this last session. That was really, really interesting.